I'm Sandy Babb. Welcome to my studio and welcome to um, part two of Craft With Me Painted Birds using my um, Painted Bird Digital Kit. In the first part we um, made all of our um, pages for the main pages. We're going to be adding to these in this session. Made all these pages for our ringbound journal. And I'm going to show you what I pulled from my stash, and we're going to add a few more inserts in this before we actually, you know, decorate and do a cover. So what I pulled from my stash is I had some of these kind of craft card um, envelopes. I pulled some envelopes, a couple of different kinds. This was from a piece of stationery or something. I have pulled some bags, and I pulled more than one, but I probably won't need more than one but I have these little craft bags um, that I thought were cute little wooden looking craft bags with the lace on them and just a regular paper lunch bag not sure which of those will get used I pulled a couple of, of kinds of um, plain paper this is a, a, a parchment type paper and then this one it's a kind of a letterhead type paper but it's got a little um, texture to it if you look at it real close. So I pulled some of those for some solid papers and um, I pulled a variety of dyed papers. There's just a couple of different grids and lines and things like that. Just a little, little variety of those and I pulled um, some handmade papers in a little variety of colors. And I pulled a few um, painted papers. So what we're going to do is we're going to add some inserts. Because if this, this right here, it would be fine to keep just this as a journal. But it doesn't really give you a lot of um, writing space. And even really, you know, kind of some decorating space. So I'm going to add, we're going to add pages in between all of these pages. So we're going to create one, two, three, four, five, six little inserts. Um, so we're going to need our offcuts of the um, craft card from where we made these pages and we're still going to need our um, book page or you know any of our book pages and you know things that we used here and um, to do the holes and, and reinforce you know those edges. So, what I want to do is figure out what I want to go in here. And in some of these, I just want some little page inserts so that there's just writing space. And then I want there to be some tuck space where there could be, you know, an envelope or something. And so, I'm just going to kind of go through what I pulled and we'll kind of, you know, put something together for between each thing. Now, you don't have to use exactly what I did. You may have some beautiful scrapbook paper you want to use or something like that. Um... I'm really just kind of sticking to solids and letting this be kind of the star of the show, um, so to speak. And so that's kind of what I want to stick to. So what I'm going to do first is I think I'm going to use, um, I want, when, when you open the book, this is going to be my, my first page. I don't think I want anything over that. So I'm going to skip that one and just open it up like this is the book. And I'm thinking I'm either going to use this one and cut it in half or the brown craft and I think I like the brown craft or I could could do one of each I could well let's see because of that the way that opens if I want that on that side I'm pretty sure I'm just gonna stick with the brown craft <clears throat> because I can decorate these so I'm gonna use two of these and these measure Five, about five and a half by four and a quarter. So I think if I butt two of these together, now we're going to have to alter them slightly, that I think that'll work. So I'm just going to tuck two, two envelopes in between that page. And we'll come back to that. I want to kind of build, you know, what I'm going to do in between this one. Okay, this one I think I want to use um, some of the papers. And I want a piece of this blue 
handmade type paper, this really pretty kind of blue. And let's see, which side do I want out? I think I want that side out. You can see the little the little things in it better. Whoops. I may have to widen out a bit so you can see what I'm doing. All I'm doing is folding that in half. We're just going to, here, let me push the book up because we kind of know what that looks like. That way I'm kind of more in frame. Okay, so this one's going to lay kind of in between these two pages. So, and it's going to be out a little bit. We may have to trim it down. And I just folded that crooked too, didn't I? Let me try to correct that. And you can always trim these down if you need to. There. That's better. Okay. So, I know what, but I want some different sizes of paper and maybe different variety of paper. And I think I want a sheet of maybe this. Let's see. You know, that's got a red bird on it. This has some little red lines in it. So, I think I'll use this one. Although I like it folded that way. Isn't that weird how you look at something and you go, but I like it the other way better. And it's really kind of the same on both sides. But you think it looks better. So <laughs> you might need that one. And I'm going to leave my little tail ends here. And I like how this is, see what I mean by staggered? This is slightly smaller than this. So I get a little bit of a, a you know, just something a little interesting. There's just something a little interesting. You know, I didn't pull any of my green paper, but that might have been pretty to use some of the green. I don't know. I was thinking about one of the, um, possibly this or this, as a another layer. Here the other side so it's got a little jag to it. Do I like that in there with that? And then add something over it. I do. So I think I'm just going to kind of, let's see, is it tear up or tear down? Yeah, tear up. I'm going to kind of just tear up on this so I get some of the white and kind of just somewhat fold that in half. Just line up the, the sides here. And put that one over here. Do I like it that way? Or that way? Let's see. Top, bottom, front, back. There's a lot of white going on in there. Let's take that edge down just a little. Kind of wide. I don't want a little bit of that, but I don't want it too much. Okay. Get rid of that. Okay. And I'll be inking all these edges. And then I want to add one more layer. I'm going to use four pieces. And I don't want this and this to be direct against each other. I think I want another, another piece of paper. So, what do I want to use? I'm even kind of thinking this and tearing it down. Just kind of, okay. kind of just tearing that down and folding it over like so. And then I've got this. To kind of have a layered look to it. So I think I'm kind of happy with that for that in between that section. Um, I may end up, oh, I just had someone drive up. Excuse me, I'll be back. Okay, sorry about that interruption. Had a delivery at my gate and had to go open the gate. Um, I, uh, let's see, what did I, what were we doing? We were doing the pages here. Okay, so here's what I did. I'm not sure what I went over, so I'm going to just unpile this and, and show you again. Um, I picked a piece of the pale blue handmade paper and just folded it in half. Then I picked a piece of the graph paper 
and layered it over and kind of centered it. Then I had picked a piece of the hand, hand painted paper and I'm going to put it a little bit toward the top. Then I grabbed another piece of hand painted paper. Um, this is in the green tone and I'm going to kind of layer it down lower. Then I took a piece of the um, dyed lined paper and folded it in half and just tore it in half like this. Kind of do it over since I got interrupted. I kind of threw my um, thought process off. Okay, and then I folded both of these little pieces. And I'll just put this to the side. Um, I'm going to put one on the outside here like this. So I'm getting this kind of layer. And then I don't want to just open it like that. I, I want one piece in the middle. So I'm going to put one piece in the middle like that. So that gives me a pretty good little signature. So I want two signatures like this that are just going to be papers just for writing and journaling and stuff. And I'll probably go back and um, maybe do some inking um, on a couple of these. I may, but for right now, that's how I'm going to build this specific signature. And um, I'm going to go ahead and build everything, and then I'll go back and show you how we're going to attach. So that signature would be in between these two pages. And we started off with the, um, we're going to do the, envelopes on that page. So see we're getting a little thicker here so you have to kind of be careful about what you're doing because we're still going to want some embellishing on here. So this would be my next page and on it I think I might want to do one of the bags. Oops, just dropped my lunch sack. And I was deciding if I wanted to do a lunch, just do a whole little lunch bag, um, or if I like the little, this little bag. And I'm always, I always struggle because I love this crafty card looking stuff and I always am wanting to <laughs> use that rather than and I was thinking how would I do the bag because I would still want it to be able to open the only way I could do that would be to attach it with just the back piece to leave it some expanse which would totally work and cut it off if I want to do a whole bag piece, which I kind of think maybe I do, maybe I don't want to, maybe I do want to go with this. Okay, so I think I'm going to do that. So what that's going to require is for me to cut this bag off here, cut this bottom piece off where it's folded up, and we'll have to seal that. And then if the bag is just attached here on this, then it still has some expanse. So the bottom will be sealed. So that one's pretty easy and just decorate it. So that was pretty easy. And then I have one, two, three more. Let's see what is on. I was trying to decide where I wanted that other. And actually, I think I want to create another one of these layers here. And I think I'm going to pretty much just follow the same thing, I think. I think I'll just do those kind of the same, since the tones are a little the same. Or I could go a little bit different and use this paper instead. We'll see how that looks. If I like this paper instead, just for something different. And then... Let me kind of look back at that and see what I did. Okay, and then I had a piece of the, like the notebook type paper, which I think is this one. I like this one the best. Let's 
sorry. I kind of, I don't have a large surface here that I'm working on, and when I start working then, I always pigeonhole myself. I'm going to push this up a little bit out of the way so you can see me folding and stuff. I'm just going to fold this one in half and see if this one, this one didn't really show as much. It's the same size. So maybe I would want to do that a little where, you know, have that one as the inside page and this one where it kind of peeks out because I kind of want that back and forth on it. Um, let's see. I used one of these. I guess it doesn't matter which one I use. Do I like the lighter, the darker? I like this one. It's a little bit darker. I know I used one of these sheets. This is just a piece of mixed media paper that had some paint. It was just left over from another project. So now I'm going to want to use one of those. And I used um, a piece of that, which I've already gotten this torn, because that was from my other sample. And I used a piece of the hand-painted paper, but I may want to, let's see, it was a piece of this. Which, if I do that, I may not want blue, blue, blue. I may want some green in there. I don't know. Let's see. I need another piece of paper to... I'm going to pull that out just to look and see how I layered it. Okay, so I've got two different there. And now I'm going to want one of these on the... Well, no, see, I won't want that on the inside because that's too matchy. Yeah. I'm going to have to change everything up. Aren't I? Okay. I know I'm going to want one of these on here. And one of these. I like this kind of stained one. And you're just going to kind of build until you get the look you want. I do know I want another paper in here of some sort. The only bad thing about using this one is it's not super good for writing, but I could always put a journaling card on there. You know, could add a journaling card onto the handmade paper. Okay, and I feel like I'm missing like something in the greener tone. I do have this paper, but it looks really similar unless I tear it or something. Let's check that. It is green. Okay, maybe that needs to be my inside paper. Let's check that. See what I mean? You have, you have to just kind of keep playing until you get what you're kind of looking for. This one has more, has, does, to me it doesn't have as much interest as the other one because of the torn papers, the edging. And that's why I'm swapping everything out. That lends a little bit more interest. That, the only thing is that is swallowed up in there. I may have to go back to my piece of blue paper. <laughs> I don't like that being swallowed up. See, I kind of do like all that sticking out. And for this, I'm going to... Rip some of it down. Nope, I am not ripping neatly. I'm just ripping. And then I'm going to decide about to about there. Let's take this part off. That way I've got a little bit more visual interest. Stripes that way, or 
do I like them this way? Ooh, I like that. I like that look on the top. And then layer my blue paper in there. And then put this on the inside. Okay, so this one just didn't make the cut. I tried. <laughs> but this gives them a little bit of a different look. You're not doing exact same thing. So I'm going to put this one back in where it belongs. In here. And I'm going to put this signature here. See, we're starting to beef up a little bit. Now, I've got this one. Let's see what we want to put in between there. Put these over here aside for like some collage pieces. Um, num, num, num. Let's see what we got left over here. I still have, I may want to do another envelope thing holder and I'll show you how I'm probably going to do that with this one because that will keep that thinner. So I'm going to add the business size envelope here and we're going to alter that a little bit. And then I've got to find something for this page here. And what do I want to put in there? Just looking at all these painted little papers and things just kind of gathering up some things to see. If I want another small-ish signature here, maybe, I don't know. I was only going to do two of these, but, oh wait, we decided that that wouldn't work because it was too, this paper is smaller here, I like the stain on that one, this paper is smaller. Maybe another small-ish signature. A little bit of the green. A little bit of the brighter blue. And... Do I want one dark in there? Because I was almost kind of thinking of sticking an envelope in there. I like that. But the green doesn't fit if I do that, does it? Let's try it. I was only going to do two of these, but maybe I'm doing three. <laughs> kind of like having three of those. That's kind of a good, I guess I'm going to have three of those. I'm going to put something in that middle. Um, and I don't know if I want to, I think I'll just tear this down a little bit. Um, I don't know if I want to use that envelope or just a piece of the card because well, I may try. I'll try it with the envelope. Okay, I'm going to tear this down a little bit for something shorter for that metal piece. Ugh, didn't want to tear like that. Let's see if I can figure that out. So basically, you're just going to go through your thing, see if you can find some, your stash. See if you can find some a variety of papers that you are drawn to and put those in your book. Okay, that's too long that way. We're going to have to have a little... I didn't want to take that off on that edge because I like that edge. I'm not going to do that. I'll get a different piece of paper to put in there. I'm just going to take a little bit off of this piece. That's good. And put this in there. Come on, line up. You, 
could score these and make it, it makes it a lot easier if you score it but what's the fun in that yeah I kind of do like this bright the only thing is is I wonder if I should have tried to I do have some painted papers over here that have these strings I saved those strings and now I'm just they're mixing in with everything I think I had some painted paper that had some of the orangey tones I'm going to see what I have, I had this like, I don't know if one of those would even look well with that. It needs some yellow mixed in. That one's got a little yellow mixed in. Not a lot. Let's see what we think about that. If I wanted just a pop of orange which, oh, to my sensibilities, I don't like that. <laughs> I think if it had more of the gold, if it was more of the gold, I would like it, but I don't like it like that. So we'll try to add a pop of that color back in there. Okay, so that's going to be the end of the signatures right there. That fills out our journal. So I'm going to move all these papers aside. I pulled a billion papers out and didn't use hardly any of them. But that's the way it goes. You don't know until you're working what's going to, you know, what's going to work and what's going to not. Okay, so we're going to get back out our um, paper scraps. Um, just the um, regular, you know, when we were cutting these pieces in the first video, we want some inch and a half wide strips of a variety of papers and you're going to want six inch and a half wide strips of this. So let me grab my cutter. And we're going to want six. This is the scraps that we had left from the other, um, from our um, original pages. And you're going to want six of these at an inch and a half. I didn't change that blade and I meant to. I keep forgetting when I clean up to do that. Okay, there's three. And this is eight and a half by one and a half. Four. Let's do five and six. Got those, and I think these were probably already inch and a half. If I want, the, if I want to cover some of these, I may not, but I may. So I'm gonna grab some paper strips here. Let's see what's in this little pile here. What did I grab? <laughs> Keep grabbing. Oh, I like that one. If it's an inch and a half wide. Let's see. Let's straighten it up first and then see if it's going to make it. Ooh. Oh, 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 that blade. Oh my gosh. I'm going to have to pause a second. Let me get a blade. Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> New blade. Let's see. I don't want to use these since I really wrecked that piece of paper. Let's try this again. And some of these, I'm going to cut off this little, um, I was say, where'd the blade go? <laughs> I can't find it. Gee, maybe this isn't a good day to be doing a craft with me. I'm going to do some of these in just a variety of little papers. Um, this one's got to obviously be evened up a little bit here. Let's do an inch and a half, and I'll cut those ends off. I don't really need to I don't care if the, if it's like perfectly straight or whatever. I'm just going to grab some papers here. This is a good one here. So, a storybookish one. 
I don't even mind that that one's a little raggedy on the image. Just want a variety of tones or looks on the paper. It doesn't really matter to me. Um, I am going to even this one out just a little. Man, a new leg makes all the difference in the world, doesn't it? Except for with this delicate paper. That's okay. Not worried. Um, what else? Let's do another slice of this. That may be enough. That is not an inch and a half. That is an inch and three quarters. Okay. That may be enough. We'll see. If not, I can cut some more down. We're going to do these exactly like we did in the first video, which is to fold these long strips in half lengthwise. You can score these, which maybe I'll do that because, you know, I don't know. You know, you can score them down the center, or you can just, yeah, maybe it'll be easier to score. Or just fold them. Just go three quarters of an inch. Score each one of these. I'm sorry this um, video is so messy today. It's just like getting interrupted kind of messed up my flow or something. <laughs> I don't know. Get along with this thing very well but I do I actually say this is probably one of the most recent things I purchased and I do love this thing sometimes I press too hard and I rip the paper so that's not a good thing okay we're gonna fold all these in half and then we're going to paper them just like we did the other ones and you could use a your bone folder or score score tool or whatever to do this. I'm not worried if everything is exact, exacting here. I just want to get it folded. And this is going to hold all those signatures and, and little things inside that we wanted to have. So we got our little scraps of paper here and I'm going to use a little bit of a glue stick um, and we've got our folded pin, um, binding pieces. Let's see, I think I used all the little holes. Let me get another one of the hole reinforcers. Good gracious, what did I, oh, they're right there in front of me. I'm looking in the cabinet and they're like right in front of me. I know I didn't, I only did one page of those up, so, okay. Let's try to get professional here and not be so sloppy now. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, we've got our hardware reinforcers. We've got our little, um, everything situated in here. The first thing I'm doing, I'm just going to kind of put my thing back there, is to work with these two envelopes. And I'm going to put one going this way to open and one going this way to open and these do have to be altered just slightly so what I want to do is fold my papers to in half let's see I like that little squiggly more I'm the, I love the Greg shorthand paper the old books if you can find those I have my mom's from high school. I would never use her book for that, but um, I do love it. And I'm going to just add a tip in of um, glue. On the ends of this paper, just enough to hold it to that, just a tiny bit. You don't need a lot. And any low-tack glue stick will do this. Um, I'm just covering this, seam, this uh, spine up before I sew it. And 
I did have some other small scraps already cut that were left over. Let's see if I can find them. There's one. And I'm just going to piece this bottom one with a piece of different um, paper. And I'm just putting a little dab just on the ends. I'm just wanting it to hold. Um, because I am going to put this through the machine just like I did with the other with the zigzag stitch. And what I want to do first on these is I'm going to go ahead and figure out where my holes are and have everything punched before I stitch. When this was a single sheet and we were just catching on the edge, it didn't really matter. But we've got some bulky stuff going to come in here. And so I want to go ahead and do that step now so that I know how far in I can put those papers and catch them without having to try to punch through all those layers of paper. So I'm going to go ahead and do the whole punch step now so that all I'm going through is just this, um, you know, two, this little piece of paper and the two things of cardstock. Um, and it's going to make it a lot easier because when I put things in here, I can see where they are and I can say, okay, I don't want that to go past that hole and I can catch it right there when I'm stitching. You see? So, what we're going to do is, since I've already slid this one in there, I'm sliding this in. I can see it through that hole, and I want to pull it back so that it's caught there, and it'll catch a good quarter of an inch, almost, there. And I want to make sure that's kind of straight, that it looks like it's in there straight. And I'm just going to mark a little line down the top of the flap of the envelope. See where I've made that little mark? I'm going to cut this section of the envelope away. I'm going to measure over and cut it the same on this side just because that will um, make it um, more cohesive looking. It won't look like an odd little um, thing, but this is going to help me place this envelope in here. And to make sure that I'm doing it exactly the same, I'm just going to take that little piece of paper and put it over here on this side. Let's see, turn it the other way. Lay it on that edge, and I can kind of mark that where I need to cut it. So that I've cut it exactly the same. Now you don't have to cut it, but I just like the look of that better. If you wanted to, you could cut your whole envelope off. I'm not gonna, you know, I don't wanna reassemble anything. So I'm just taking a little piece off. It's just a little decorative element that makes it the flap look a little more cohesive. And I'm going to do the same thing to this one. I'm just going to, I'm actually going to slide it under this one and line up my envelopes and draw my lines and cut that away. Let's see, I need to line them up a little bit better. Gosh, I can't get a hold of it. Okay, kind of get that centered. There we go. And I'm just going to mark both sides and cut that away. So that I've got both of these altered. This is so that the flap actually opens. Now a lot of people seal their envelope and then just cut away an edge. But I really just want it to be a top loading envelope. And I don't have to do a lot of altering to get it done this way. So, okay, we're going to do that. And then I'm going to use a tiny bit of the glue to just nip this down exactly like I want it. I want to make sure that this is opens freely. And don't worry about this because I'm gonna we're gonna put a little tab here, and this is not really gonna be noticeable when you do that. You just need to make sure that you don't get it so close that it doesn't move freely. So I'm just going to put a little, little bit of glue, just a little bit on both sides, just enough to hold that in there before I take it to my machine and zigzag stitch this in. I'm matching it all the way to the top. These two envelopes um, are going to fit in here kind of perfectly, you know what I mean? They're going to fit kind of tight and perfectly against each other. 
and I want one to open this way and one to open the other way so that I've got a solid on the bottom of one and a um, print on the bottom of one. And I think I need a little bit, I'm going to have to put a little bit more glue there. A little bit more glue. I don't like doing that because, you know, it makes your needle gummy, but sometimes you have to, you know. And you can always use a paper clip or something to hold that in place until you're, you know, ready to take it to your machine. So I'm going to put a little bit of glue here and do the same thing. I'm going to flip it over, though, because I need to see the opening on this side to make sure that I get it, that I butt these up against each other, and then I get that in there so that my envelope opens freely, like that, okay? Now, I'm going to take this to the machine, and I'm going to be careful when I'm stitching here. I'm going to, this is going to be stitched just slightly different instead of going all the way down, because I don't want to catch my flap. I'm going to zigzag stitch with this flap open down this way. I'm going to flip it over and zigzag stitch this up this way with my flap open because I don't want to catch this. I need this to be free. So I'm going to stop and go stitch this one and I'll be right back. Okay. So I've gone to the sewing machine and done just what I told you. I have stitched down this far with this one open, stopped, flipped it over, and stitched down this one this far so that both sides have an opening flap. Both of my flaps, make sure both your flaps are at the top. I guess I should have said that or you might have something fall out. But that is this page. So um, to prep the little rings, again, I should have done a couple of pages of these. I'm just going to ink up the um, the little, oh, what do you call these? Reinforcers. I want to call them everything but what they are. The whole reinforcers. I'm using Ranger Potting Soil ink and just a dauber or applicator, whatever you want to call it. And then I'm taking that same ink and a stamp. This is a Stampin' Up! French script stamp. Came from Hobby Lobby, years old. Um, I'm just going to over stamp these. Um, just, whoops. I'm trying to sit down and stamp. That doesn't work for me. Sometimes when you're vertically challenged, it's better to stand up to work if your table's a little dull. And this table is hot tall. Okay, got that done. Get that aside. And I'm going to want to take the dauber. We're doing this exactly like we did on the first video with all the pages. And I will, again, once all this is done, I will go over this with a, a Liquitex matte gel medium on this because the papers I'm using are old and they're more fragile and I don't want them to crack and kind of break off there. And anywhere I have a space that's a little blank like that, I'm doing exactly what I did in the first video, but I'm just going to go over it one time with you um, in this one if you didn't see the first one. And I'm just over stamping that kind of planer writing, and I'll do a little bit on that side, okay? And then if you want to, and I probably should have thought and inked these before I stitched them down, but I was trying to get all the steps in here. Okay, we're done with that part, and then we'll do the same thing we did on the others, which is to add the whole reinforcers here. And then, like I said, I will go over this with a Liquitex matte gel medium just on the spine to protect my older papers from flaking, cracking, and tearing off, since they're actually going to get the most wear and tear. Okay, so we've got that page done. That page will insert in here. And I, oh, I did on the, some of these brighter papers, I did ink them down just a little bit. If they were sort of on the whiter side, I didn't want them to be really that bright. Just kind of blend them into the background. So that's our first um, insert. Now, the next one we have is going to be this um, paper one. And we're going to do, we're going to need to attach these papers together before we um, 
put them in there because it's easier to catch them a little bit here and then put them in there than it is to try to catch them all. I mean, you might, I maybe, I'll try and see without doing that. But what I want to do first is I'm going to pull some of these papers and ink them. Okay, everything inked. And I went ahead while I paused and um, inked the other sets of papers too. It's probably best just to go ahead and do them all at one time. That way you're not, you know, making yourself crazy. And that way, since there's three of these signatures, I'm going to show you how to put one together and then you can go back and do the other one. We're going to do the same thing we did here with our paper and just pick some paper. And we're going to do a little bit of little bit of glue here. I like that side better. I'll do a little bit down here just to hold that paper on while I, you could adhere the whole thing. But like I said, since I'm going over this with matte medium, I know that I'm I'm okay just to adhere, you know, just enough for tacking it down. If you're not adding matte medium, you might want to go ahead and use better glue. But just make sure that you know you're going to be punching through it, so don't use something rock hard like hot glue or something. That would be really rough to try to, um, let's see, I want a lighter piece. Well, not that one. Well, I guess I will do that one. It's okay. Hold it over and you can tell how professionally I do this. Just kind of willy-nilly, whatever. Get the job done. Okay. I'm going to take that sheet and mark my holes on this one. I'm going to line it up and mark the holes and go ahead and punch because, like I said, this time it's easier. You could have done that on the first, but with just one ugh, just one layer, it's not really too bad. But when you're doing multiple layers in there, it's really best to already know where that's at. Plus, this for me is easier for me to punch it that way. Okay, got that. Now I want to put this on here. I'm going to see. Somehow I still feel that I need to. I, I just feel I'm going to feel safer going ahead and putting these together. Now, there's two things you can do you can just take it to your sewing machine and stitch down it or you can go ahead and punch a couple of holes and put a binding string in there and tie it and um, then when this is stitched down it just holds it in place another thing you could do I said two you could do three you could do light glue like this so that you're sticking each spine piece together and you don't have to do a lot you just have to do a little because you are going to catch it but you don't want the paper sliding so you could just do this which is what I think I'm going to try to do just do you know I just want them to hold and you can pin these with a paper clip or a, a bulldog clip or some kind of clip you know while you're sewing them in but that seems to hold well just doing the, the glue so may just be doing that and I'm just rubbing it on this spine area just a little bit too and then centering it back on the book how I want it and just kind of pinching and that really seems to be holding well okay we'll just do that then that's gonna work but it's gonna be up to you how you want to do it because this is gonna be sewn in it's gonna be caught and sewn in so it's not going to come undone, but you want them to stay together while you're doing this. So I will rub a little glue on this outer edge and this outer edge to try to hold it while I'm sewing. 
and then I can line it up because I can see the holes and this is probably where a paper clip would be a good idea a paper clip or something would be a good idea a clip a bulldog clip a clothespin anything to hold this until you get down to the sewing part so I think I'll grab a couple clips just to hold that until I get to that part you know so that it's where I want it without it interfering with the rings just to make sure the paper is not coming over so I'm gonna pause you I'm gonna go ahead and prep the other two paper signatures exactly like I did this one and stitch them and I'll come back and we'll finish them out okay I wanted to come back before I stitch this last bundle of papers this these papers are shorter than the length of this so what I'm simply gonna do is I've got this all attached on here ready to sew I'm just gonna clip that extra off um, so if you have some papers that are slightly shorter, some of mine are the same length as the full eight and a half, and some of mine are shorter. So just cut that off and then do your stitching. So I'm going to stitch this last bundle and I'll be right back. Okay, I've got all three sections of this journaling paper, and honestly, it worked fantastic to do the glue on the spine and hold that together and then just put the two clips and sew. And this whole bundle is in here now very good so you've got all this journaling paper and these can be you know if you want to you can go in and do some of the folding to get them to you know to fold and, and move right for that first section and then coming back over for the second one you might want to do this just to get your pages limber and ready to kind of you know turn over so anyway that is a whole journaling section I've, I've been put it where it belongs in my book and then we're going to come back and do we've got this bag to do there's another journaling section that I've gotten done it's in place and we've got another envelope to do and there's the last journaling section Oh, the one thing I did want to mention on this, since this is a book page and it does have paint on one side, I'm probably going to go back and just do a little bit of uh, white gesso on here, just so that it is good writing space. This paper here is not going to be good writing space, this handmade paper, so it's either a good idea to just do a small embellishment or to go ahead and adhere another piece of paper to it so that there's writing, but you can still see the handmade paper because this is not going to be good for writing on so but um, I've got three kind of juicy sections for writing so let's go back to that paper bag wherever I have that in there okay let's go back to our paper bag so we've, I've got all my little things here prepped you know my ends the little um, attachment pieces and I'm going to want to attach this. See how the bag has a gusset? I want to open the gusset. This is going to be attached like this. I don't want this front attached. And I need to um, do the bottom of the bag. So I'm just going to take some glue. And where is my glue? Yeah, here it is. I'm just going to take some glue to the bottom of this bag kind of open it out and glue that little back I'm just gonna glue everything together here so I've got that whole back section there and then turn it around and do this whole back section and that should glue everything together should catch all those gussets and things like that so we've glued this together and I think I want to add a little piece of a slice of uh, some sort of paper across that. Now see, I didn't glue. Your gusset still needs to open. So um, when I put a piece of paper across this, I'm just going to glue it across the front 
and across the back. You know, just a little slice of some, I don't know what kind of paper. I'm just going to grab something here. See what we've got over here to the side. I was hoping I had one of these torn pieces that was kind of long enough that I can just cut down a little piece. Just to give a little bit of decoration. I'm going to ink the edge of it just a little bit the top edge because I'm going to glue it down and I want to glue it right across there just on the top and I think I'm just going to use this glue here glue stick and this is going to give it a little bit more stability on there cut that off those little edges gives the bag a little bit more stability right there and I want to do that again on the back side before but see like I didn't do it on these gussets if you want to do it on the gusset do a separate piece of paper because if you don't <laughs> it's gonna glue your bag together there and I want the bag to still have some of the um, movability to it, you know, where you could actually put something in there. So, oops, just gooing that up on. Got some paper in there. Put this one on here. Of any unwanted glue. And I'm just doing this mostly for design element. It does strengthen the bag a little bit. And okay, yeah, a little, little ink, little ink. Okay. Yeah, I probably want to ink my bag before I tuck it in there too. Enough with the inking already. Okay. And this one, when I put the bag in, I want to be sure my gusset is folded back. I'm just going to clip it back so I don't catch that when I'm sewing or anything. Make sure that one gusset is out of your way because you don't want to sew that down or your bag's not going to be expandable. And you're going to put it in the edge of the paper thing. Put my little glue down that edge. I'm lining my bag up. Now my bag is not as big as the paper here. You can see I'm lining it up to the edge of those holes. And I'm going to pinch that down. I'm going to cut away this excess. It'll still fit in my book perfectly. I just don't need all that extra there. And I'm ready to stitch this down, ink it, and put on the reinforcers. Hang on just a second while I stitch it and we'll finish this up. Okay. Put on my little hole reinforcers wherever I buried those at. Ink this down. This paper's a little, a little whitish lighter than I want it to be for this project. You know, it's really funny. I hardly ever do work with white paper. I prefer cream, off-white, tan, brown, neutral, 
more neutral paper. I don't know why. <laughs> I just do. I'm going to remove those clips. And now, my little bag will expand a little. Now, I don't want this thing to come all the way out and open like this. So now that we've gotten this sewn, we're going to take a little bit of that glue and put in here and glue this little flap down. Just do a little quarter of an inch or so right there and glue this flap down because you don't want it, I want it to expand some, but I don't want it to just flop open. And um, the reason we didn't do that in the first place is because the if you had sewn this in, you could have sewn this in, but then only one side of your bag expands. So that's why we waited until this portion was done before we did that. So that should get our bag sewn in there and it's ready for decoration and we have one more envelope so we're going to put this in our book and we have our little expanding bag and then we have one more envelope and it's a good thing I have one more because I'm almost out of this exact brown thread I think I have just enough to sew this one and <laughs> I'm done <laughs> okay so this one I want to do it in two lengths I think I'm going to do it to about there. I'm going to fold this envelope over and one of these is going to be shorter than the other one. Like that. I think that's pretty, yeah, it's pretty even. I'm going to cut it on that fold line. I'm going to kind of gently fold my envelope over like this so I can follow that line and trim this envelope edge to look the same as that one. So that it looks, you know, like that. And I'm going to do the same here. Just kind of gently line that up on both sides and trim around it so I get that same little curve. I'm going to go ahead and do my inky process right now before I get this whole thing put together. I'm not going to do that like I did last time and put it together and then go, oh, I should have inked it. I should have unked it. Inked it first. Oh, I think it's time for this video to end. <laughs> and we are going to end it right after this. And then we're going to come back and start doing embellishing. Get the other one down here, and then we're going to seal that open side. We may not have to, but that's the sewn side. I really don't have to seal it, I guess, unless I want to. This is going to get all of our signatures for our journal done. Okay. Everything's neat. There we go. Um, where's my little thing here? Okay, this is the open side and this is the open side. So, I may have to go ahead and seal that. Unless I want to do them opposite again, which I kind of think I might. I think I kind of like that with them opposites. And we're going to do that same little step, or I don't know, maybe I like them both opening. Actually, I think I want them both opening. So with this little one, I am going to need to seal this outer edge. I guess I'll just seal them both since I'm sealing, but um, I don't really need to on the other one. But this one does need the edge sealed. So if you want to, you can go ahead and seal both of these. And I think I do want them opening on the same side on this one. But they're just going to be... Um, a little bit, you know, the page will be like this, and then you'll have the backs that can be decorated. So we're going to do that same thing we did with the other envelope. And with this one, I need to mark that. Pencil, pencil. 
going to cut that down. I'm just going to line these up and cut them both the same since they're both going in there. Because I have to allow for them going into the spine and to open. So I did that little cutting thing too soon. <laughs> Pull it over and cut again. Sorry. Which means I'll have to ink again a little bit too, won't I? I forgot that step. Folding this over and rounding that corner. Okay. Just not a bit not a big deal. Just a little bit of a inconvenience there. Okay. Now I'm going to put the glue down here to hold these in. Figure out where I want them. Make sure they're not covering the hole there and that they're lined up. And I'll do a little bit of a piece of glue here. I probably need to put a clip on these. Let me get them in there and I'll kind of clip it down to hold it while I get over to the sewing machine. And this one's going to be a little bit shorter also. I'll leave a little bit of a gap in between there. There we go. Whoops. Pull it over a little bit. There we go. Clip that and then I'll cut that excess off. And then again, I'll sew down Also, with this flap up and down, and then with this flap up and up, so that I don't catch my flaps in there. Hang on, and I'll be right back. Okay, I literally, I told you I was almost out of this thread. I literally ran out of thread. I needed that much more thread to be able to sew this. So, I'll have to get some more thread and kind of connect that stitching there. It's not connected. So, we will put our hole reinforcers on. and ink and that completes all the signatures of this book and I usually like to do my cover last um, I'll probably save the cover for the last thing it looks like I'm gonna have to go to the store and get some thread um, I was literally holding the end of the thread off the spool while it was stitching the last just to try to get it that far and I was like there wasn't enough to let it get all the way down there and I just don't have any more of that specific color so I'll have to do a little patch in there or I may just do a decorative element over it and you'll never know who knows what I'll do okay so let's do a quick flip through of what we've accomplished here and this is going to conclude part two when we come back in part three we're going to do start the embellishing and then we will make a cover and assemble this and so you can see it's a nice size little journal it's not too chunky at the moment it can get that way you know the more you decorate them the more they're going to kind of splay um, but we'll address the um, you know that issue when we get to it so here's what we've accomplished so far in our book and we've got our envelopes our little journal blocks an expanding envelope that you can put stuff in we've got a, another little journal block of paper a couple more envelopes to tuck things in and our last journal block so this should be plenty of fun junk journaling so we'll come back with the embellishments I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and, and uh, ink all the edges of the embellishments that I have cut out from the kit and that way I can spare you more inking so thanks for joining me I'll see you back um, for part three and um, see you around the studio